Hi, so as I was continuing with the organic chemistry part, so this is the next video in the same segment for the senior interorganic chemistry. I told you in the previous video that I will be talking about the elimination reactions and then I will compile SN1, SN2, E1, E2 together to determine in which case which mechanism you have to apply. So this is the video for it. Here let us see firstly the elimination mechanism. Uh, so before going into mechanism, as I told you in the previous video also that mechanism is overhyped. So rather than going into mechanism first, let us firstly remember what will give us the marks from here to here if you can remember till the end and you can write it 4-5 times, you will be getting the marks easily. Just a little, little, little bit of presence of mind will also be required. That also I will tell where the presence of mind will be required. But right now let us see. So when we have CH3, CH, Cl, CH2, CH3, which are the elimination agent, eliminating agents you can get in your course, you will have alcoholic KOH. Now here be aware that sometimes what they say, na, sometimes what they do, they will write like RCl plus CH3, CH2, OH and on the arrow they will write KOH. So people get confused. What they start doing, they start replacing CL with OH. Thinking that ki, sir, this OH will attack on this CL, uh, on this R or some mechanism like this, ki, sir, you said lone pair will attack etc etc. But understand mugging is the first thing you have to do in the organic part. What thing happens you should know first. Determination of what is going to happen is the later phase. And if you're lucky enough, you don't even have to do any uh, prediction or something. You have to just write the things that you know. So understand, whenever you have KOH with ethanol, it is alcoholic KOH only because this is alcohol. And when you have alcoholic KOH, you don't have to think. Otherwise, you have to always give the answer as elimination. That is what your course is saying. So understand, we have to answer as per the need level course. Sometimes your answer can be correct also. In organic chemistry, overthinking is a problem. And why there is overthinking? Because of lack of education. Problem is that people have so less knowledge in the organic chemistry part because they don't work enough hard for the organic chemistry. As a result, they start predicting the reactions. Rather than that, make sure you firstly write all the reactions in your notebook and you read them at least four or five times, write them two, three times so that you are totally exhausted with the reactions so that any of those reactions come then you are able to answer them. Ha, any new reaction is there, then the prediction can be necessary. But again, if you are not prepared well, every reaction will appear to be a new one and you will start, start predicting for each and every reaction. And your predictions are not always going to be correct because for better prediction, you need better quality of knowledge. So understand, remembering the reaction is the first thing. Prediction you don't have to do for the NEET examination anyway. All you have to do is remember the reactions and write in the exam just like you do in the organic chemistry. Just uh, in organic chemistry. Just that in organic chemistry, because of mechanism, it becomes comparatively easier to remember the reaction. But anyway, so understand this idea, ki if you have alcoholic KOH or if you have CH3, CH2, OH with KOH on the arrow, both cases, you are going to get the elimination reaction and the product is going to be alkene. So let us see. So when you have alcoholic KOH or when you have any NH2 or heat, any NH2 with heat, and when you have RO- minus with ROH, RO- minus means C2H5O- minus is there, in the presence of ethanol, C2H5OH, in these three cases, you are going to get E2 mechanism majorly, but the product is going to be SAGE gel. What is SAGE gel product? In SAGE gel product, dekho ya, if this is, let's say the chlorine, this is the carbon, let us call this carbon as alpha carbon. The carbon having chlorine is called alpha carbon. The neighboring carbons are called beta carbon. So let's say we have two beta here, beta 1 and beta 2. So there are two neighboring carbons, beta 1, beta 2. Always the elimination here we call as beta elimination. And what is the beta elimination? That the halogen will go from alpha and the hydrogen will go from beta carbon. That means if this is the carbon losing the halogen, only and only the neighboring carbon will lose the hydrogen for the elimination reaction. So what happens? You have two hydrogens here. I'm writing one is this hydrogen, the other one is this hydrogen. I hope it is clear to us. This CH2 I have written as CHH, and this CH2 have, CH3 I have written as CH2H. In reality, what happens? It is anti-elimination. What is this TO chemistry? Anti-elimination means the hydrogen should be bottom and CL should be up. That means they should be in opposite direction. But I don't think it is necessary that much for the NEET examination also. Just knowing that it is anti-elimination is enough. And that much you can understand from your notes also. It's very simple kind of a question. Some questions come in the stereo chemistry as well. Simple shortcut you can remember. Uh, C, A, R, this kind of shortcuts you might do. Cis, anti, reshmic, 
when you add bromine with CCL4 on the alkene, all those examples might be given in your notes. They are not much important for NEET examination, so I'm not touching them. I'm focusing upon this part, which will give you marks in the NEET examination directly with minimum efforts. So understand, if you have alpha here, there are two beta carbons in the neighboring. So if this CL goes with this triangle, the double bond will come here in the middle. So what is that going to form? CH3, CH double bond CH, single bond CH3. Whereas, if this CL and this square hydrogen goes, these two goes, in that case, the product is going to be something like CH2 double bond CH, single bond CH2, single bond CH3. Now, what is the difference? Difference is that, in this case, this is called Hoffman product. Hoffman means the double bond is in the corner. Whereas, this is called Sager product. Why? Because it is more substituted alkene. It is more substituted alkene. What is the meaning of more substituted alkene? Simply, are, when you see this alkene here, you will say this is the double bonded carbon and this is the alpha carbon, this is the alpha carbon with respect to them. Don't say, sir, here the alpha carbon was this, here the alpha carbon changed. Yes, alpha carbon is the carbon attached directly to your functional group. So Cl and this was the carbon attached to him directly. Here C double bond C is the functional group. So their CH3 is attached to him directly. So the first carbon attached to any group is called alpha carbon. So for different compounds, different alpha carbons you will be getting. So if you see hyperconjugation here, these two alpha hydrogens can show hyperconjugation. So total six alpha hydrogens can show hyperconjugation. Here, if this is the functional group, this C double bond C, then this side no alpha carbon, this side only one alpha carbon, so only two hyperconjugating hydrogen. So which product is more stable? So here stability wise, Sage F is more stable than Hoffman. So always the favorable product is going to be Sage F. So when you have alcoholic KOH, when you have NaNH2, when you have RO minus with ROH, you are always going to get Sage F. And in the case of tertiary butoxide, you are going to get the Hoffman product. Again, I will explain each and everything in the second segment of this video, same video. But firstly, understand what will give you marks. That understanding will give you satisfaction. Chalo, I understood finally how it is happening. But marks will come directly by knowing this. Now, what is this thing? This is tertiary butoxide. I am uh, making the structure on the board. Something like this. This is tertiary butoxide. So understand, this tertiary butoxide is going to make a Hoffman product. Whereas, whereas alcoholic KOH NaNH2 RO minus is going to make Hoff, uh, Sage F product, which is more stable. Understand one more thing: ki here there are two possibilities of making a product. Then we are concerned about this. There are some compounds where you will not get any other uh, any other possibility. Na? For example, you have CH3, CH2, Cl. So this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon. So only one beta carbon is there. So there is no Sage F or Hoffman. There is always going to be the same product. So sometimes they can ask you this question also, in which reaction tertiary butoxide and alcoholic KOH will give the same product. So first option they can give like this, second option they can give like this. So we can understand here we have two options, alcoholic KOH gives Sage F, whereas tertiary butoxide gives Hoffman, so different products will come. Whereas here only one beta carbon is there, there are no two possibilities we can get Hoffman and Sage F. So in this case we will get the same product if we take alcoholic KOH or we take tertiary butoxide. So understand this idea clearly, ke bhaiya, Sergef, Hoffman, you have to check only, firstly you have to write alpha, then beta, beta. If there are two neighboring carbons, then we can say, bhaiya, one of them is Sergef, one of them is Hoffman. Which is Hoffman? Corner double bond. Which is Sergef? More substituted, that is middle double bond. Somewhere in the middle you have double bond. First thing. Second, this is above neat level, but it's a very commonly asked question in most of the coaching institutes. So uh, I'm talking about this also. So if you have a leaving group here, instead of chlorine, if you if your leaving group is fluorine, NR3 plus or SR2 plus. Instead of chlorine, bromine, iodine, if you have fluorine here, NR3 plus or SR2 plus, highly electron withdrawing groups are there. In that case, whatever you take, even if you take alcoholic KOH, you take NaNH2, you take RO minus, you take uh, tertiary butoxide, whatever you take, you're always going to get a Hoffman product, it's always going to be Hoffman. Understand? Uh, this I'm talking about major minor product. 
here said jeff is major said jeff is major product minor is hoffman here hoffman is major minor is said jeff here also hoffman is major so understand two things hoffman can come with any person in tertiary butoxide or it can come with someone having fluorine nr3 plus or sr2 plus as a leading group with any of the eliminating agent so make sure to remember the eliminating agent make sure to remember bhaiya everyone prefers said jeff except tertiary butoxide why i will explain the second part of this same video this was about the alkyl ether chapter about alcohol phenol ether chapter yeah in alcohol uh, in alcohols this is the alcohol for example is the alpha carbon this is beta 1 beta 2 i think this is clear to us ki bhaiya in this case said jeff uh, said jeff and hoffman can happen but here said jeff hoffman is not what we are talking about we will talk about even e2 mechanism here so understand in both cases the answer is going to be said jeff only in this case <clears throat> the answer is going to be ch3 ch double bond ch single bond ch3 so what happened this hydrogen it went off with this oh so what about this one this is a minor product if double bond has to come in the corner that will the minor product this is the major product that means sir in all the cases you are going to get the said jeff only in this case yes but there is a small uh, catch here the small catch here is that there are two mechanisms the trick is that whenever whenever you have acidic medium by some h plus like h plus is available so whenever h plus is available you will have even mechanism and whenever h plus is not available you can check al2o3 and heat p2o5 and heat so whenever you have no h plus available in that case you are going to have e2 mechanism so what is the use of even e2 mechanism i told you in the previous video also mechanism only two kinds of question comes speed of reaction which we discussed about sn1 sn2 and second rearrangement so understand whenever there is as even mechanism there is a rearrangement possible whenever e2 mechanism is there there is no rearrangement in very simple words if you ever get al2o3 heat and p2o5 heat just write the reaction like this you will get your answer but whenever you have concentrated h2so4 or h3po4 or just h2so4 and h3po4 we can say generally we use concentrated also but h plus slash h2so4 or just h2so4 or h3po4 in such examples whenever you have these people that means h plus is available in such example always we will write the mechanism and get the answer but i will tell you that in this second part of the video so one by one i will start i will firstly explain e2 mechanism what happens there Then I will explain even mechanism what happens there, and then I will explain in the E2 only that why this tertiary butoxide is making Hoffman and not the said jet product. This one because it is already above the NEEP level, we will not be discussing in detail. So I will be just ending it here itself. Even I will carry on, and E2 mechanism I will carry on, including that why tertiary butoxide is making Hoffman and not said jet product. So this thing, mug it up by heart, write it down as much number of times you want to write, but don't forget this at least. Understand this also that this possibility of said Jeff Hoffman is not there in every case. You have to check like this that whether there are two beta carbons or not. Then only said Jeff Hoffman product is possible. Otherwise, everyone will give, will give the same answer. Chalo, Bhaiya, let's go on to the next part quick. <clears throat> so here I am taking some examples to explain you the even E two mechanisms. So let us start. So this is the same compound I have written in the expanded form now, and again you can mark here. This is alpha carbon. This is beta one carbon, beta two carbon. For simplicity, I have written beta one, beta two on the top here also. Or you can write or remove it. I will put it later. So now what the mechanism is simple. We have a base. Who is the base here? In the case of alcohol, KOH, OH minus is the base. In the case of any NH two, NH two minus is the base. In the case of RO minus, RO minus is the base. In the case of tertiary butoxide, tertiary butoxide is the base. So base is any person having negative charge or lone pair ready to take the hydrogen away. What's the difference between nucleophile and base? There is no major difference. Any base can be a nucleophile. Any nucleophile can be a base. Difference is that if this negatively charged particle attack on carbon, I will call it nucleophile. If he attacks on hydrogen, I will call it base. Sir, so how would we know it will attack on carbon or hydrogen? as i told you in the previous part of the video alcoholic koh will come elimination okay now sir to think about this if someone give you alcoholic koh what you will do elimination that means in that case oh minus x like a base but if i give you aqueous koh 
then substitution this was an example of substitution aqueous KOH to understand alcoholic KOH elimination aqueous KOH substitution so what if they will ask, ask us something that is not there in the NCRT they will not ask by some that is what the whole problem is you don't understand that yeah, organic chemistry is not tough if you start doing it from the ground zero that is from the NCRT thoroughly remember all the examples given there from there only the question will come so understand this what happens in the mechanism B minus go to this hydrogen it has two options rather than this hydrogen I should say it will go to this hydrogen it has two options option number one and option number two why did he choose option number one because just now as I said in the previous example Sergej product is more stable because of more hyperconjugation double bond more substituted double bond that means double bond having more alpha carbon is more stable than the double bond having less alpha carbon so this double bond has only two alpha carbons so hydrogens will let us say six here the alpha hydrogens are too many so this will be more stable we can understand i hope this part is very clear to us because 3 3 6 3 9 3 12 12 alpha carbon uh, alpha hydrogens are there so more stable here only six alpha hydrogens so less stable in very simple words double bond coming somewhere in the middle of the chain is more stable than double bond coming in the corner of the chain so if I take this hydrogen and this chlorine, you can understand. If I take this hydrogen and this chlorine, double bond comes in the middle. If I take hydrogen number 2 and chlorine, double bond comes in the corner. So which one we will write? We will write the Sage Jeff product as the major product. So the answer is going to be CH3, single bond CH, double bond CH, single bond CH3. How we got this? Simple. B minus came. He already had electron. He already had electron. He came to hydrogen and he said, he told to hydrogen, ki, bro, I already have electron, I can make a bond with you. This was the condition. Hydrogen gave one electron, carbon gave one electron. So B minus told, ki, bhaiya, I don't need your electrons at all. You leave your electrons and come with me. So B minus, that is, let's say OH minus, let us say NH2 minus, they take the H plus away. Forming water, forming ammonia, forming alcohol. RO minus plus H plus, NH2 minus plus H plus, OH minus plus H plus. Where the electron went? It went to the carbon. Carbon shifted the electron to this carbon saying, Kya, bro, I have got two electrons now. Why don't we both make bond because carbon carbon bond is very strong. So what they do? They start making another bond. As a result, this carbon tells to chlorine, Ki, bro, I am getting the electron from carbon. You take both these electrons and you can go. And this all happened in the same step. That means, B minus comes, take hydrogen electron shifted to this carbon, carbon leaves the CA behind this. That product is formed. And this always happen in anti-periplanar. What is meaning of anti-periplanar? Nothing. If chlorine is pointed upward, upward direction, the hydrogen should be in the downward direction. So they are always opposite in configuration, then only the elimination will occur. This thing is not that much important, but most of the faculty discuss this in the class, so I am just telling you that in case you see any word like anti-periplanar, it is associated with the E2 mechanism. So I think this mechanism is clear to us. B minus will come, take the hydrogen away, electron shift there, Cl minus goes. Question arises, ki if bhaiya Sage product is more stable, major product is Sage F. If Sage is the major product, because it is more stable, then why is it, it is forming Hoffman here and not Sage product here? Let's understand. So, they go, yeah. here, this tertiary butoxide, na, he was very happy. Why? Firstly, OH minus came, he reacted, he saw the reaction, tertiary butoxide saw the reaction, ki OH minus came, NH2 minus came, RO minus came, and they took this hydrogen away. So, he was very, very happy. Ki, okay, I will also come, and I will also take which hydrogen away. You can check here. If he takes this one number hydrogen away, this molecule has just written in the opposite direction like this. If he takes this one hydrogen away, number one hydrogen away, double bond will come in the middle. If he takes the corner hydrogen away, double bond will come in the corner. So what he decided? He decided like anyone else, I will take this hydrogen away. Problem is there. What the problem is? He is too fat. He is so fat. He was very happy here. Like OH minus took the hydrogen away. Na? Passing through this, we can understand. Passing through this CH3, steric hindrance. OH minus came here and took the hydrogen away. He also tried doing so with his big body. But the problem was to reach from there to here. From backward also, sir, can he attack? 
हाँ बट बैकवर्ड ऑल्सो देर आर देर इज अच थ्री ग्रुप ना सो बेसिकली टू रीच टू दिस हाइड्रोजन फॉर दिस फैट टर्शरी ब्यूटोक्साइड इज वेरी टफ यार सो वट ही डज ही कम्स इन ही रियलाइज की अब ग्रो रीचिंग देयर इज वेरी टफ आई एम टू मच फैट इट्स वेरी टफ टू रीच देयर सो लेट अस टेक द नियरेस्ट हाइड्रोजन एंड गो दैट इज वाई टर्शरी ब्यूटोक्साइड टेक्स द नियरेस्ट हाइड्रोजन पॉसिबल नियरेस्ट बीटा हाइड्रोजन पॉसिबल least hindered beta hydrogen possible and he goes making ch3 ch2 ch double bond ch2 that is hoffman as the major product so basically he tried to make fat jet but because of his big size he was not able to reach up to here and take the hydrogen where is small small oh minus small small nh2 minus they came here dodging this methyl group and took the hydrogen away this fat person cannot do this that is why tertiary butoxide favors Hoffman product rather than Sajak product. Then this was about the alkyl halide. 